excuse me. Hello everyone. Welcome back to a brand new video. As you can see, first off, everything will be looking a lot uh, cleaner. It's, I mean, it's quality will be a lot nicer. It's not going to be any glitches. It's because I have a new plan. I will be streaming live on Twitch. I will be streaming, um, or I'll be recording my videos with Twitch. But yes, they will be streamed. Now, the actual streams I do will be on Mixer. Unless Twitch works better, then I will transfer all my, uh, everything I do on Mixer over to Twitch. Alright, oh, I don't think this is going to be the case, uh, but I will toy around with it today. Play some Fortnite and see if the lag is really bad. Of course, I can, I could switch the, um, <clears throat> sorry for clearing my voice. I could switch the, um, the broadcast quality to as low as it can be. It would still be a lot better than, uh, Mixer. I'll do it anything it's got, anything it takes, so I can get some content out for you guys. But anyways, welcome back to a brand new video. Uh, in this video, I will be giving evidence and deconstructing a very bizarre Forsaken Raid boss theory. Uh, I am the Exile Gamer, once again. Let's get right into this. Let's find a spot where we can sit in peace. Discuss very bizarre theory. We'll be going over a lore standpoint on this. We're not gonna be going over a technological standpoint. Yet at the very end, I probably will give. Oh my! I'll finally we'll put a uh, put a nail in it and book it up. All right, here we go. All right. First off, the theory itself. The theory of a second red boss could in fact be Oryx. And yes, I'm talking about Oryx, the Titan King. The same Oryx who saw me slaughtered on the moon. The same Oryx we, spent, we sent spiraling to Saturn. The exact same Oryx. The one with the wings. One of the... One of the uh, most powerful hive gods we've... The, we've ever seen besides Zol now this theory uh first off it, it's very bizarre we can all agree to that and to many this theory is dumb why would Bungie do this again we're talking about this from a lore standpoint again from a lore standpoint this could be a possibility let's go over why before we provide evidence you need to understand how a hive god has to be killed. Hive gods have thrown worlds, and some examples of this are Oryx's thrown world. Oryx's thrown world is the dreadnought, just kind of bled into our reality and in inside out. Crota's thrown world was in the Hellmouth, and Omnigal also has a thrown world, we just don't know where. When a hive god is killed in their throne world, they are killed permanently. However, there are two pieces of evidence that contradict this. The resurrection of hive gods killed in their throne worlds and weapons such as the Touch of Malice and the Whisper of the Worm. Let's talk about the first counter-argument. This is the resurrection of hive gods, even though they were killed in their throne worlds originally. This example comes from the Book of Sorrows. Oryx kills his sisters, Sevathun and Zaifu Aerith, in their throne worlds. However, they are brought back to life. Uh, in verse 3.9, verse 3 part 9 of the Book of Sorrows, it reads, Oryx made war on the Ecumene for a hundred years. At the end of those hundred years, he killed the Ecumene Council on the Fractal Wreath. And from their blood rose Zaifu Aerith, saying, I am war, and you have conjured me back with war. Zaifu Aerith needs war in order to feed her worm and grow stronger, otherwise it will consume her. This is the case for all the hive. From Thrall, to Ass, to Knights, to Wizards, to the Ascendant, to Sevathun, Zaifu Aerith, Oryx, <coughs> and so on. 
Uh, I believe that the Hive, who at the time it did uh, not have the bond of lineage intact, meaning tribute would pass up Hive ranks from Thralls, all the way to Orcs, Seventh and Sephu Aerith. I don't think this was intact at the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, how this how the uh, the bond of lineage would uh, kind of change this a little bit was if the bond of lineage is intact. That means that you know all the all the enemies below Zyvu Aerith who waged war because how how it works is a thrall kills a thrall kills it takes enough to feed its worm a little more to grow then it does the rest of it to the acolyte and it goes it keeps going up until it goes all the way to Oryx. So if uh, let's, let's say Zyvu Aerith since Oryx uh, led the hive against the Ecumene Council and they killed. Could there have been enough uh, bloodshed and uh, feeding to feed the worm, her worm, fully? Because when the worms are fed, they grow hungry, but you grow stronger. If Zyfu Aerith had enough tribute and her worm was fed, would it be possible for the host to overcome death itself? This is something exactly no. That, that that's the, this is the only case that we have seen this or heard of it. We haven't even seen it. We've only heard of this. Of a ascendant god, of a hive god, overcoming, uh, being killed in their throne death. <clears throat> but Zyphuin also was brought back to life. Verse three point nine also reads, Zyphu Aerith made war on the Ecumene for forty years. At the end of those forty years, Orc said to the Dakua nest, "Listen, I am jealous of my sibling as Zyphu Aerith. Help me kill her." But in desperation, they agreed. But he drove the Dakua nest, the, the Dakua nest, into a trap, and they were made extinct. From their ashes rose cunning Sabathun, saying, "I am trickery, and you have conjured me back with trickery." I believe that the same claim that I made earlier can be made here too, where a worm that is satisfied allows the host to, to overcome death itself. Again, this is all just speculation. Oryx acquired knowledge in order. Putting this into an example would seem very confusing, but it shows Oryx could in fact be resurrected like his sisters. The second piece of evidence that Oryx could be alive is the fact that he already is alive. <clears throat> Let me explain this in depth. In Destiny 1, we received the Ravenous Heart upon killing Oryx. The Ravenous Heart is a part of Oryx in which we use to make the Touch of Malice. This heart is what gives the Touch of Malice power to continue on to perform the sword logic. <clears throat> Alice keeps Oryx's consciousness intact. This means that killing a Hive God in their throne world isn't always a permanent death, but a death that destroys a physical form. When on the last shot of the, th of the Touch of Malice, you can hear a voice. It is Oryx's. By killing with the Touch of Malice, we prove and use the sword logic. The sword logic states that you can mend an impurity by killing it, by cutting it out, pushing the universe to its perfect final shape. Here's the problem with that theory. However, with the Red Legion's attack, our vault was destroyed. Ironically, the Red Legion may have put the final nail in Oryx by destroying the gun. Theoretically, who knows, the gun could still be out there. Maybe the gun was destroyed. Maybe Eris Morn took it. We don't know. Speculation, we have no clue what I mean, it could be the same thing that could be said for anything in our vault. No clue what happened to any of it. These are all the reasons from a lore standpoint on why orcs could be the raid boss in Forsaken. But I also want to talk from a technological standpoint quickly. Bungie will in no way, shape, or form bring orcs back. They would never recycle such a big villain such as orcs. Also, Game Informer said the raid boss is a dragon. The only dragons we know of are the Amkara, and who else do we know who is part of the Amkara and is part of the Hive? The Worm Gods, Ir, Yule, and Ur. However, we don't know their whereabouts. Who knows, maybe it is a god? Uh, but this theory is also destroyed to when Bungie confirms the female. Neither Oryx nor the Worm Gods fit into this category, unless there is a hidden uh, Worm God, in this case Worm Goddess, 
that could be uh that could be the final raid oh and uh quick mention for the raid there's gonna be a lot of bosses this is this raid's gonna have the most bosses we've ever seen in destiny history the most bosses we've ever seen it was let's see it was in king's fall it was the war priest golgoroth um Ranook, Irhalak, and Oryx, those five. So there's gonna be more than five bosses. This is gonna be an extremely hard raid. And of course it's taken, so. This leaves people speculating on four others. Marasav, Kiraya, Savathun, and one of the Ahamkara. I will not be making videos on these four because I don't have the time or the patience to go and get evidence for each collective one when people have already put their theories out there. Now, I don't. I, I read this all off the script I made, so I'm going to talk about this part. If it's a little, if it's not as smooth, this this will be why. Um, but the final raid boss, I think it's going to set us up for the next DLC because the next DLC will be Hive, and then it'll be the Triangle Ships. Um, or that might be Destiny Three. We don't know, but <clears throat> well, Triangle Ships for the Darkness. But anyways. That aside, I personally believe it's Kiraya who is the raid boss, or another something something that works under Savathun. Because let's be real, Savathun has had so much hype; she can't be a raid boss. She's got it. She's because then what would the next hype DLC be? What would the DLC with the hype be? Another Worm God? I would hope not. Or Togland, or what? I don't know. But, um, I believe it's going to be, uh, the raid boss, the final raid boss, at least, will be something that works, uh, under Savathun, uh, under a greater deity that is being controlled, which is what the Taken do, which is what Oryx did as the Taken leader, which is probably what Savathun will do, especially since she is very cunning. But anyways, thank you everyone for watching. If you guys have any theories on the uh, who you think the raid boss will be, say so in the comments. If you enjoyed, dislike if you did not like, and leave some constructive criticism if you will. I'm the Exiled Gamer, and this is B. Until next time. Thank you for watching. Appreciate all your support.